This is Dr. Claire from Dr. Claire's Apothecary. And I'm on a meditation retreat. This is the last day, so we're just packing up. But I thought it might be interesting to see what was in my teacup. Gathered from going on a walk in November in the south of Ireland for a change as I'm in Carlo. So the first one I'll show you is the millifolium, which is the yarrow. And there were little bunches of yarrow at the edge of the lawn. I'm in a convent, which is very, I always find a very reassuring space. And these are the tiny leaves from the millifolium. And this is the wet flowers. And they look rather beautiful. Um, they're not as bitter as I expected. Sometimes you taste the yarrow and it's very bitter. These were very mild. It might be that the constituents change with the seasons, but it's still good to put in the teapot. And then there was a beautiful weeping willow, which you don't get a lot of in the west of Ireland. Lots of other kinds of willows, and they all do the same job. You can also use small twigs of uh, willow, as the bark has more of the salicylic acid. And as I was thinking on my walk, I was thinking of a nice way of remembering that salix, which is the willow or sally, um, brings solace. And it certainly brings solace to anybody in chronic pain because it has a lot of salicylic acid. But like um, all of the other herbs, and more, the more complexity um, I see, the more I see that the complexity is universal. And that's one of the reasons why the herbs work so well for us is because our own physiology is so complex. Um, but the uh, action of the uh, constituents of the salix are not only due to the salicy salicylic acid because when they look at the amount, analyse the amount of salicylic acid, it doesn't amount to um, sufficient. Um, so the only other explanation um, for the uh, analgesic effects is that the other constituents also contribute. So next on the palette is these hawthorn berries and this is what they look like after they've soaked in water and boiling water. Um, uh, so there I, I tried to put a little tooth mark in each one before I put it in the in the tea so that the tea would the boiling water would also infuse the flesh. And indeed, I even chewed one um, and it was actually fleshier and tastier than I expected. Um, and not sweet, but um, uh, enough of them would give a hint of sweetness. And if you compare that with the sweetness of our modern sugary foods, it gives an indication of where we have gone with our taste buds fed by a processed food industry. Um, I was attracted to these um, and I thought they were rose hips as before they were infused they were redder but in fact it's a crab apple um, so I just popped one in for good luck um, apples are uh, nutritious and also the pectin is good for binding the stool um, and good um, uh, feeding for the um, microflora which of course dictates um, quite a lot of our hormone balance um, and uh, is also linked to antigens um, and forming antigens and these are the rose hip. Um, now don't bite into the rose hip because the seeds are hairy and if you as you swallow them they can stick to the pharynx at the back of the throat and cause a lot of they won't cause any harm but they are very irritable irritating um, so I just popped them in whole. Um, all in all, what did it taste like? Very pleasant. Um, not sweet, not bitter. Uh, a faint aroma. Um, and uh, much more pleasant than drinking water. Um, which is uh, um, softer. It's more the, the texture of it than the actual taste. Um, so very enjoyable. I just topped it up with water throughout the day and I'm about to go for a walk on the final day of the meditation retreat, a very gentle meditation 
retreat and um, I should see what I should collect for today. Probably very similar. Okay, I hope uh, you're all well and keeping well. Goodbye from Dr. Clare.